memories. Bring back memories uh, when you were growing up. And then in the church, brings back memories of people that you used to sing right beside and hear their voices and hear their testimonies and just be loved on by older folks. It's, it's wonderful. I uh, want you to take your word and look in Matthew. Just for a moment, Matthew. And the message today derived from my everyday reading in the Word. How many of you read the Word every day? Good for you. Good for you. It's nourishment. How many of you eat food every day? <laughs> All right. If you eat food every day for the body, you need to eat the Word every day for the soul and for the spirit. Vitally important. And as I was reading the Word, every year when I come to a certain chapter in Kings, I want to jump into that King's heart and mind and try to tell him, do this. And when I go to the next chapter, I see another man who was told by God to do a certain thing, and yet he went and did the opposite anyway. And I want to jump into him and say, stop listening to other people. And that's the message today. Listening to the wrong voice. Listening to the wrong voice. Because the wrong voice will always give you unwise counsel. Always give you unwise counsel. And the devil will see to it. There's a song that I had to learn for a funeral a couple uh, weeks ago. Don't know if I can do it <clears throat> justice with my throat. I don't know. But the words are this. Long black train. There's a train that's driven by the devil. It is a train that makes you want to stop and stare. It's a train that's so enticing, you just got to get on it. But the song warns you. And this is the warning in that song. Hope you can hear it well enough. There's a long black train Coming down the line Feeding off the souls That are lost and cry Trials of sin, only evil remains. Watch out, brother, for that long black train. You can look to the heavens, you can look to the skies, you can find redemption staring right in your eyes. There is protection, there is peace, the same. So burn your ticket for that long, long train. Cause there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. And don't go riding on that long black train. Well, there's an engineer on that long black train making you wonder if the ride is worth the pain. He's just waiting on your heart to say, let me ride on that long black train. Well, I can hear the whistle from a mile away. It sounds so good, but I must stay away. That train is a beauty making everyone stare. But its only destination is the middle of nowhere. Oh, but there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. 
Cling to the Father and His holy name And don't go riding on that long black train I said to cling to the Father on that long black train Watch out, brother, for that long black train. For the devil is a-riding on that long black train. He's the engineer. And guess where he's taking you? Not in the middle of nowhere. He's taking you right down to where he lives. Listening to the wrong voices. The devil will use voices to tell you things that will go against the will of God. The devil will not try to enhance the will of God in your life. When you're growing up, you're going to hear two voices. Mostly they're going to be the voices of your mom and dad. In fact, so much so that you don't want to listen to your teacher because that's not what my mom and daddy say. They'll come to school and my wife would tell me what four-year-olds would say. I mean, one of them came in one day and he kind of just got tired of school and studying and writing and all this kind of stuff and he stood up and he put his hands on his hip and he said, I'm tired of this mess. <laughs> well, where did he get that from? He heard that from his mama who probably said that to him. I'm tired of this mess now. Do what I'm going to... So you hear voices from your mom and dad. Good voices because they love you and they're not going to try to tell you anything is wrong. But then you grow older and you start hearing other voices, other opinions. You develop some on your own. Your own flesh begins to have its own desires and, and its own ways. And the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right to you, but the ways thereof are the ways of death and destruction. Oh, I'm on the right path. I know I'm in the will of God. Oh, wait a minute. You better know what the Word says. Because the devil will tell you, this is what the Word says. I mean, he took the Word and he twisted it in the ears of Jesus. And said, oh, he's going to protect you, even if you jump off this pinnacle. And Jesus said, no, no, it's written, you don't tempt the Lord thy God. It's a good thing Jesus knew the word. He knew the will of God. And thus, he wasn't able to be persuaded even by the devil himself. You might have said to yourself, but the ways of the Lord are hard. They're difficult. And you're right, because Matthew, the scripture I just gave you, says, Enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. You know what you got to do to go to hell? Nothing. That's right. Nothing. Just do nothing. You'll make it. But the word says, narrow is the way, and difficult is that way. Narrow and difficult is that way that leadeth to life, and there are very few that find it. Very few that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward, they are raving wolves. Beware of the friends you hang around. Young folks, I was that drilled in my mind. I mean, my, my parents drilled it into my thinking even before they were children of God themselves. Watch who you hang around. I didn't believe it because I couldn't see any faults. In fact, the guys I hung around did things that my flesh wanted to do anyway. And remember, the flesh doesn't want to do the will of God. So, thus I got a lot of spankings. My mom and dad didn't know what time out was. Time out would have been a blessing to me. <laughs> it would. But they used a belt on me and thank God they did. So many people are led away from the truth of God by listening to the wrong voice. Here, smoke this. It'll make you look like a man. 
Here, try this, it'll make you feel good. Here, drink this, it'll make you forget your troubles. Get on social media, and you hear all these, I don't get on there. I don't have time. I don't have time for, hey folks, I, to me, a lot of it's trash. I don't have time to hear what somebody else is trying to tell me what ought to be right and wrong. I got the Word of God, and I got the Spirit of God that tells me what's right and wrong. Amen. Amen. Watch your social media. Watch your TV. Why even commercials are telling you to do things that are not correct. Principles of God are just completely forgotten. Uh, uh, TV teaches you all kinds of junk too. So be careful about those voices. They're there. They influence you a lot. And without you even knowing it, they'll influence you. Be careful about the, the articles you read, the books that you read. Just because it's in print doesn't make it truth. Watch the voices that you hear. And I'll tell you what I, I usually do. I wish I'd have known this when I was younger. But somebody tells me, of course, nobody tells me anything anymore anyway. I mean, you, I am hard-headed. You can't tell me anything. <laughs> the reason being, I'm sold out on God. I'm sold out on Him. And I want to be hard-headed. I'm going to make you hard-headed too. Nobody can talk you out of God. But my question is this, to somebody that's steering you wrong, can you give me a scripture that proves that? Can you give me a scripture that tells me what you're saying is true? If they can't tell you from the Word of God, and they tell you, oh, but psychologists say this, or, or this is what other people have done, and it worked for them, and all, don't, don't go that path. Don't go that path. Remember, the ways of God are hard, difficult. So don't listen to that mess. Stay trained. Young people, stay trained. I know you're probably going to forget some of the things I'm telling you right now. But be forewarned right now. Being forewarned is forearmed. Not everything you hear is gospel. Even if it comes from your teacher. You might love that teacher and think the world of them. And they might even say, I believe in God. I go to church. But you cannot fall for anything that might be said, even what I say. If I say anything according to my flesh, because sometimes some people are in situations and I want to say, my flesh wants to tell you what to do. But it wouldn't be right. I can only tell you what God says. And if you want to know what God says, then okay, we'll have a conversation. Uh, so is there scripture to back up what you're saying? I was reading uh, 1 Kings 12, 1 Kings, uh, a very interesting chapter of Scripture. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to you. I had it written out, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to you. There was a king by the name of Rehoboam. And he was king over the land, and Israel was a part of that land. His daddy had died, thus he becomes king. And Israel comes to him and says... Hey, your daddy was a, a very hard taskmaster. Taxes were really high, and he beat us, and the labor was hard. Would you just lighten up on us on the taxes? Would you lighten up on us on the discipline and the labor? Well, Jerob, I mean, Rehoboam said, hmm, I'll get back with you in three days. So he goes to the elders who are of, of God, and he says, this is what the people want. What do you think? And they said, if you will lighten up and you will lessen those taxes, you will have a people that will be loyal to you and serve you for the rest of your life. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't like that. I don't like that. Well, isn't it something? We keep, we keep, trying to find somebody to agree with what we're feeling in ourselves, We keep, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, just agree with me. 
I guess that's why I don't get counsel. People don't want me to counsel them too much because I'm not going to agree with them if they're wrong. Jeroboam says, I mean, Rehoboam said, okay, let me talk to my buddies I grew up with. And he, he said, what do y'all think? And they all said, bah, those complainers, I'd make it so hard on them, instead of beating them with a whip, I'd beat them with a scorpion. I'd raise those taxes a high, they would never be able to pay. They'd be in debt to me forever. Now I'll make it hard on them. And so three days later, Israel came and said, what's your answer? They said, we're going to make it hard on you. You think my daddy was something? You ain't seen nothing yet. My daddy was maybe one ton pressure. I'm going to be three tons pressure on you. I'm going to be three times worse. So you better, you better listen. Well, they went away. It wasn't long till old Rehoboam sent a man who was the labor, over laborer, and he was going to tell Israel what to do. They stoned him to death. Word got back to the king, and the king says, uh-oh. Israel has risen up against us, and we're going to die. The Bible says he jumped on his chariot, and he took off as fast as he could go. Thus, he lost his kingdom, his home, and his comfort, all of it, because he listened to the wrong voice. If he'd listened to the voice of the men of God, what would he have had? Ah. Then you go over to the next chapter. I thought, well, you know that? If I could just jump in that little old, old king's heart and say, I'm going to listen to the wise men. But I can't do that. And every year I read it, I think, I think of the same thing. If I, in fact, I had a woman who, who used to call me long distance a lot while I was evangelizing. And it was always a 45 minute to an hour conversation over the same identical thing every single time they called. And I kept on saying, why do you, you want to, did, did you, here's what the word says. Do what God says. She says, yeah, but pastor so-and-so said this, and, and now I got another friend that said this. I said, are, 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 are you listening to all these voices? Are you trying to find the one that fits what you want to do in your flesh? To give you permission to go against God's will? She didn't like that. I said, I'll always give you the word of God. If you don't obey what God says, then you are in sin. <sighs> that was about the only way I guess I could keep her from calling me because she would call me about every week for probably a year. At that point, I said, look, if you're going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, you do it. But I cannot give you agreement upon what you want to do in your flesh. Psalms 1, happy is the one who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of the scornful. Because if you start listening to the voice of the enemy, you're going to soon stand with the enemy and it won't be long. You'll be so sought in your way you can't get out. So that's the problem. People that fall away from God and don't do the will of God they get so far into it that they start believing a lie and they can't get out. That's called apostasy. They can't get their soul restored. That's why I try to warn people, don't go the path. Don't go the path. If they'll just listen, don't go that path. Young people, don't listen to the, to the, to the instruction of what the world is saying you ought to do. Well, there was a, in, in chapter 13 of 1 Kings, there was another man, doesn't give his name, but he was a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord said, I want you to go over to Judah, and I want you to tell the king there these instructions because he is going the wrong direction. And if you'll listen to me, I will bless his kingdom. If he doesn't, I will curse his kingdom and he will die. So the old prophet goes over to the king. The king doesn't like what he says. I don't like that instruction. Tell the Lord to give me something better. You can't get better than what God already gives you. And so the king reached his hand, and I'll, I'll, I'll choke you. And just as he put his hand out there, his hands became paralyzed. He said to the prophet, pray to your God that he will heal my hands. And God healed his hands. I'll listen to what you got to say. By the way, come and eat with me. 
He says, no, if you gave me half of your kingdom, I wouldn't come and eat with you because the God that I serve gave me strong instructions not to eat or drink in this land, but to come straight home another way. He said, okay. So he went off his way. There was an old prophet in that land who said, which way did that man go? They said, well, he went, he went that way. Saddle my donkey, I'm going after him. So the old prophet caught up with the man of God. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going back home. He said, how about coming back to my house? Come on back to my house and eat and drink with me. He said, I can't do it because God said not to do it. He said, oh, I am a prophet of God too. And I heard the angel of the Lord tell me to tell you, come on and eat with me. Well, okay. So he went. And while he was there, the old prophet was prompted by God to speak, and he did. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, because you have disobeyed me, and you have eaten and drinking when I told you not to. In other words, God didn't change his mind. We think God changes his mind. Because of that, you will die, and you will not be buried with your ancestors. He was saddened by that news. He knew he had disobeyed God. He got back on his donkey. Just as he got outside the town, a lion jumped on him and killed him. And there he, his carcass, stayed there so all could see what disobedience to God was. Well, let's go back to that king. Did the king obey what the prophet told him after he had seen the miracle of healing his hands? Nope. The Bible says he chose to go his own way. And because of that, he and his kingdom were completely destroyed, annihilated off the face of the earth, the Bible says. Wow. If they had to do all over again, I think they would listen to what God had to say. But oftentimes, it's way yonder too late. Do you trust the Lord? Do you trust Him? The Word says that well, I'll get to the, what the Word said. The world says. The world will say, trust your heart. In fact, they got a book out. Trust your heart. Trust your heart. How do you feel? Do what you feel. It's not wrong. In fact, God gave you those feelings, they'll say. Oh, no. Our flesh is totally against what God wants. The heart is more deceitful, the Bible says, and desperately wicked. And you want to trust it? I can't trust mine. The way of a fool, the Bible says, is right in his own eyes. But the wise man, he listens to counsel. There was a story of a father who had his son set up on a, a porch, which was about yeah, probably uh, six feet off the ground. He got down and he said, son, I've got to teach you a lesson. He said, now I want you to jump. Jump into my arms. And so the little boy reluctantly stood there and said, Daddy, I, I don't want to. He said, trust me, son, trust me. I'll catch you. I don't know. Come on, trust me. And the boy took a leap, and the daddy stepped out of the way, and the boy fell flat on his face on the, on the ground. He picked his son up, brushed, his, brushed him off, dried his tears, and said, Son, let that be a lesson to you. Don't trust anybody ever. Well, on this earth, that's about the tr truth of the matter. Man will always fail you. The Word says it. But you put your trust in God. He will never fail you. Never, ever. Putting your trust in Him. It's better to take refuge in the Lord and trust in the Lord than to trust in man, Psalm says. Micah says, do not trust in your neighbor. Do not have Confidence in that friend. Hmm. The Word's advice. Now that was the world's advice. The Word's advice is this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And the Lord will bring it to pass. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Trust the Lord and do good. And you'll dwell in the land faithfully. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. Trust in the Lord all the time, Psalm says. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and fortress, and I will trust in Him. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. 
I will then therefore, Hebrew says, put my trust in the Lord. He who walks, in the, as, walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Watch who you hang with. Watch who you hang with. You can have buddies. You can have friends. But don't let them lead you astray. Don't, lead them, don't let them lead you astray. I, believe you me, when I got into high school, I was, I was born again. Got into high school, I was a freshman. Born again. New Christian. And boy, I'll tell you what, I had voices around me. I had voices around me. Take this. Do this. Drink this. And I knew enough to say, that's not pleasing to God. And I'm not going to do it. You know, I don't have a regret to this day. In fact, I've lived long enough to all the boys who were my friends, but could not influence me. And neither could I influence them. They didn't want to go to church. They didn't want to go to revival meetings like I did. They didn't want to have anything to do with God. But after a couple of divorces, a couple of lost kids and wayward, wayward children, I'd see them now in church. They'd put their arm around me and say, Tim, man, I wish I'd listened to you when I was a teenager. I could have, I could have, I wouldn't have a messed up life. I wouldn't have a messed up family if I just, if I just listened to you. You can be an influence. In fact, I, I need to develop a message Rather than being a field, you'd be a force. A field is something the devil plays on, but a force is something that God can use you to change the lives of people. <clears throat> Do you know somebody who is on drugs? Ask them, how'd you get started? Well, I had this friend. Oh, he had a friend. You know somebody who's an alcoholic? Ask him, how'd you get started? Well, I had this friend. Ah, that's a friend on a long black train who says, come on, get on with me. 1 Corinthians 15 says, do not be deceived. Evil company will corrupt good habits. Evil company will corrupt good habits. If somebody around you is not speaking the will of God, get away from them. If anything else, if, if you hurt the feelings, just say, I'd rather you not speak with me anymore. I'm deaf to what you've got to say. Unless God says it and you can show me in the Word of God, I don't want to hear what you've got to say. Wow. Ending with this one chapter, Genesis 3. Good old Eve. Good old Eve. Everything was doing good, and God said, stay away from this tree. Don't eat the fruit of this tree. But what did the devil or the serpent say? God didn't mean it. God doesn't want you to be like him. See, you'd know as much as God if you eat this stuff. And it's good. I've, I've eaten it. It's good. Come on. You've you got to have it. You've got to try it. And so what did Eve do? Well, I know God said not to, but I don't see any harm in one bite. Oh, I don't see any harm in one of this, one of this, one of this. I don't see any harm in this. And then all of a sudden, you're caught. Eve was caught. And the bad news is, not only did she caused herself to go down the tubes, but she took Adam and all of us with her. Now think about it. You think, well, it's only hurting me. That's a trick of the enemy too. You don't realize your sin is going to hurt everybody around you. All your friends, your church, if you go to church, it's going to be everybody's going to watch you. And the Bible says, <clears throat> when he says, if one convert a sinner from the way of the ways, 
He covereth the multitude of sin. What that says to me in James is, if I convert somebody from their sin, say for instance, those four people that gave their heart to the Lord yesterday, I know they're in the midst of foulness. I know they're in the midst of atheism. I know that. But in converting them, if they stay strong in the Lord and influence somebody else and influence somebody else, it covers a multitude of sin. Not just yours, but a multitude. May they listen to the voice of reason. May we be that voice. That's the main thing. We say, well, I'm not going to listen to their voice. Well, okay, now my recommendation is be the voice. Be the voice. I was wondering this morning, I said, Lord, I, I know that a lot of our young folks are not going to be able to be here today because of such and such. And, and yet, Lord, I, you've spoken to my heart. Should I save it? And my devotion this morning was, no man ever spoke like this man. I thought, whoa, here we go. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. And I thought, Lord, that's my prayer. May grace be placed upon my lips. May I speak like you. Lord, therefore God has blessed you forever. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned and I should know how to speak a word in a season to them that are weary. Oh, his mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved. This is my friend. And he bore witness and marveled at the gracious words that came forth from his lips. May we have gracious words. May we be that kind of, of people that give advice godly. May we be people of counsel that would give the word of God with knowledge and understanding. And if many of you have lived long enough, you can give to our young folks knowledge, understanding, and experience. I tried it this way. It didn't work. Tried it God's way. Always will. Always will. So that may we always be a people that stop our ears up from the voices that lead us wrong. I have to do that. I have to do that. Uh, I, I hear, I even hear counsel from other pastors. And I say, and I walk, I don't, I don't, I don't tell them, you know, you're wrong. But I hear their counsel and I'm saying, no, I cannot do that. That is not, that is not godly. That is not what God said. Do I do everything right? No, I do not. But I know I'm on the right road. Because I've not gotten, no one has been able to veer me off the road. I'm not saying that boastfully. Because I know there's temptations out there. But at this point, I thank God that he's kept me right. And may by his grace, I stay right in his sight. And may I guide others to do the same. May I do others the same. Father, I know that there are voices. And I love, Lord. I love, especially... Well, I love our people. And Lord, some of them are hearing things <clears throat> that are literally damning their life. I pray that, Lord, you will deafen our ears to that which is false. And may our heart be in tune with what is right in your sight. I pray, Lord, for our young people. That they will even teach those who are not even here today. That, Lord, they will they in their young minds will not fall prey to the falsehoods that come 